This is Lesson 7, Robert E. Lee Read Aloud. After two days of fighting, the cornfields around Gettysburg, Pennsylvania were all destroyed so that one could hardly tell that there had been crops there at all. Green grassy pastures trampled by so many boots and horse hooves were now nothing but mud. The trees in the forest had lost their leaves and many were burned or simply blown to bits by cannonballs. In short, all around Gettysburg was a wasteland, but the battle was not over yet. It was past midnight. The date was July 3rd, 1863. Two Confederate soldiers stood guard outside the door of a small stone farmhouse at the edge of the battlefield. Several Confederate officers paced back and forth in the yard. Should we see if he's ready to issue orders? asked one of the officers. No, don't bother him. The old man will tell the old man will let us know when he's ready, said another. Inside the house a man stood hunched over a table, studying a map by candlelight. He was not a very old man, just fifty six years old, but constant war and worries had brought new wrinkles to his face. He was far more thin and frail than he had been just two years before. But all the soldiers loved General Lee, as though he were their own father. They called him the old man, out of respect. General Lee's full name was Robert E. Lee. General Lee was born in 1807. He was the son of a hero from the Revolutionary War who had fought bravely alongside George Washington to make America free from Great Britain. Robert E. Lee joined the Army at age 17 and graduated second in his class from the United States Military Academy. Then, Lee served in the United States Army during the Mexican-American War. Lee was proud to serve in the U.S. Army before the Civil War, but Robert E. Lee was born and raised in Virginia, a Confederate state. Lee married Mary Cuttis, a great-granddaughter of George and Martha Washington. After they married, Robert and Mary lived in Mary's plantation home, known as Arlington House. This is a photo of Arlington House in Virginia. Lee did not think the South should secede from the Union. Like many other people, he wanted to find a peaceful way to end the disagreement, and he swore he would never break the oath he had taken to uphold the United States Constitution. At first, Lee refused to join the Confederate Army when President Jefferson Davis asked him to take command. Then, just before the Battle of Fort Sumter, President Lincoln asked Lee if he would agree to take command of the entire Union Army. Lee refused that offer as well. Only when his home state of Virginia decided to secede and join with the Confederacy did Lee finally make up his mind. He hated the thought of fighting against the United States, but, even more, he hated the thought of fighting against his home state of Virginia. General Lee became commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, making him one of the most powerful and recognize, recognizable figures in the Confederate Army. This image shows Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his closest advisors, including General Lee in the middle, discussing their war plan. Thanks in large part to General Lee's excellent abilities as a general, he commanded the Confederate Army to many victories in major battles on the field before Gettysburg. But still, so many men had died in those battles, and there was no end to the war in sight. There was a knock on General Lee's door in Gettysburg. It was Major Venable, Lee's trusted friend and aide or helper. General, I have reports from your field commanders, said Major Venable. Go ahead, he said, turning his attention back to the maps on the table. General Ewell had trouble organizing his men, sir, and General Rhodes failed to attack as ordered. General Early tried, but he gave up as darkness approached. Lee tapped his knuckles on the table and stared at the maps. There had been nothing but bad news all day. After two days of fighting, the Union Army held the high ground. Its soldiers and cannons spread in a tight line atop a long ridge, refusing to budge no matter how fiercely the Confederates attacked. The Union Army was on higher ground than the Confederate Army, so they had a better position and ability to see. I've made my decision, Lee said. We will strike at the heart of the Union line at Cemetery Ridge and divide their forces. Then the rest of our army will attack on the left and right. In the morning, the old man rode out to greet his soldiers. The men cheered and waved their hats whenever Lee rode, pa Lee rode past, and he waved and smiled confidently, doing his best to keep their spirits high. 
Later that morning, though, things did not go exactly according to Lee's plans. The Confederate forces attacked, hoping to break through the Union lines and send the enemy retreating from the field. Lee knew that if he succeeded, the South would have a chance to win the war. If he lost, it may not. The battle went on all day, but the most important moment came when Lee ordered General Pickett to lead his men in a daring charge across a wide open field directly at the middle of the Union lines. The move known as Pickett's Charge was a catastrophe for the Confederates. Half of Pickett's men were killed, wounded, or captured. At the end of that third day, the Union still held the high ground. Lee had lost the battle and had to retreat to Virginia, abandoning hopes of invading deep into the North. The day after the battle was the 4th of July, a day when Americans normally celebrate their independence. In 1863, however, celebrations were not so cheerful. Even in the North, where word quickly spread that the Union had won a major battle at Gettysburg, a war-torn nation was exhausted from battle. In the three days of the battle in, at Gettysburg, many, many men had died, were wounded, or had been captured on both the Union and Confederate sides. This battle proved to be one of the bloodiest in all of the Civil War. With all that bloodshed, Few people on either side found reason to celebrate.